Joel, I bet when you were little, you played with toy trucks and made all sorts of engine noises, like vroom. Of course I did. How did you know that? Well, you're a guy, right? And guys play with trucks and like heavy equipment with big engines that spew out lots of smoke. It's the macho thing. Well, those diesel engines used to throw out lots of smoke, but now they're burning a lot cleaner, thanks to a new fuel. I bet that's biodiesel, made from soybean oil, right? Right, but how did you know that? I learned it from my friend Shelby, who toured a biodiesel plant near Albert Lee. She said biodiesel is a renewable form of energy that we grow and produce right here in Minnesota. Sure sounds like a good concept to me. Shelby's going to give us a video tour of the plant right now. Take a look over here. Hi, I'm Shelby, and I'm here at Soymore, a hardworking business in Albert Lee, Minnesota, dedicated to finding healthier alternatives to petroleum oil. Using renewable resources such as soybeans, the staff here can use its natural oil to produce biodiesel, a revolutionary resource that could change the future for the better. Hi, I'm Shelby. Hi, I'm Mary. Nice to meet you. You too. What are you working on? I'm testing biodiesel. How do you go from soybeans to the oil for biodiesel? Well, the soybeans are crushed and oil comes from that. Uh, we have something that looks like this. It's a food grade oil. But what we use is this product here, a little less refined. And we make biodiesel from that, which looks like this. And in addition, we also have glycerin, which looks like this. How do we go from the natural oil in soybeans to biodiesel? Well, let me show you how. Okay. Here we have a simplified picture of a soy oil molecule. And what we do to make biodiesel is take methanol, this is an abbreviation for methanol, and add it to that soy oil. What happens is this alcohol group on the end here replaces all those G's, which stand for glycerin. So it's how we end up with biodiesel and glycerin in the end. Why is there three G's, or glycerins, in the molecule? Well, the soy oil molecule is also referred to as a triglyceride, meaning mm, I've three heard that glycerides. So what do you do with the glycerin? Because obviously you have the biodiesel, then what do you do with the glycerin? Glycerin, we sell to customers. They use it for things like cosmetics, toothpaste. Uh, we consider it a co-product. Are there any leftovers? No, everything is either biodiesel or glycerin. Uh, when we react it, they actually separate by weight because glycerin is a lot heavier than biodiesel. So it'll sink to the bottom? Yes. Boy, oh boy, all this biodiesel stuff and renewable energy seems like a lot of science. What kind of degree do you have to have to work here? I have a degree in chemistry. And what's your job? I'm a quality assurance manager in the lab. So what do you do? That means that I need to make sure all of our product is tested before we can sell it. Do you have an example of the kind of testing that you would oversee? Sure, let me show you. Here we have an instrument that tests the acid number of our biodiesel. That's not Mountain Dew, is it? No, this is a sample of biodiesel that we've added chemicals to to perform the test. So you test the acid with this machine? Yes. What would happen if there was too much or too little acid? We would call up to the control room in the plant, and one of the plant operators would make an adjustment to our process. What other equipment do you have in the lab? Over here, we have an instrument that tests the moisture. Everything that we have, from the soy oil to the chemicals, always contains a little bit of moisture, but we need to make sure there's not too much moisture in the biodiesel. Wow, this lab has a lot of stuff. But where is it made? Well, that's out in the plant. Let me show you. Wow, this is where our tour starts? Yes, it is. But before we go in, you need a hard hat for safety. OK. How come you get a pink one? Well, if you're a female employee at our plant, you get a pink hard hat. So if I get a job here, I'll get a pink one too? Yes, you would. Let's start our tour. This is the control room of our plant. So tell me everything that goes on in here. Well, the plant operators have the capability to control every single valve and all of the piping out in the plant by these computers. So with individual people at each computer, they can monitor and control what's going on? Yes. Wow. How many gallons would you say that you produce a year? 30 million in one year. 
people must have to work 24 hours a day to get that done. <laughs> yes, we run what's called a continuous flow process. Just like when you turn a faucet on and it's flowing, that's the same way our plant works. Everything is flowing all the time. So what goes on in all of these tanks and pipes out here? Well, actually out behind the plant we have a tank farm where we store our soy oil, chemicals, and the finished biodiesel. The chemicals and soy oil get piped right into the plant where the reaction takes place. From this reaction we get two products, biodiesel and then our co-product glycerin. These two products separate because glycerin is so much heavier than biodiesel it mm -hmm. sinks to the bottom of a tank. That glycerin gets piped out to a storage tank while the biodiesel goes to the other side of the plant for a filtration step to help purify it. Can we go check it out? Absolutely. Great. How is the biodiesel cleaned and purified before it's shipped out? The biodiesel is sent through these large filters to help remove impurities and then it goes out to the tank farm for storage. This is our tank farm. These two tanks in front of us here have methanol in them. They're each about 40,000 gallons. How does the methanol get here? Well, the methanol gets brought in on a truck or a rail car, and then there's a pipe that will come over and come into the top of the tank to fill it. And this is what you use inside of the plant to add yes. your biodiesel? The one tank behind us here, this large silver one, and the other one those are 500,000 gallons each, oh and they hold gosh. our biodiesel. Where does all the biodiesel go from here? The biodiesel goes from this storage tank to our loading facility over here. This is where we load our rail cars with biodiesel to be shipped out. About how much can one car hold? Each car can hold over 20,000 gallons. Once all the biodiesel is loaded into the cars, where does it go from here? They get shipped to oil refineries and then it's blended with regular diesel. What kind of vehicles can use biodiesel? Things like tractors, construction equipment, even school buses and city buses. These are some everyday things that people take all the time then? Yes, anything that has a diesel engine can use biodiesel. There you have it. It's all grown, picked, processed and refined. And this renewable energy can end up in my school bus. Thank you for the tour, Mary. You're welcome. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Shelby. That was really interesting. Biodiesel as an industry is just getting going. U.S. production in 1999 was less than a half million gallons, but that grew to almost 300 million gallons in 2007. We're a logical place for this industry, too. That's because more than 7 million acres of soybeans are grown here every year. And soybeans produce the oil that's used to make biodiesel. You've had slogans in the past, Joel, and now I've got one. Okay, hit me with your best shot. Using fuel from beans is making our air more clean. Hey, I like it. And more engines are liking biodiesel, too. The post office vehicles, the park service vehicles, city and school buses, big farm equipment, over-the-road trucks, you name it. Any diesel engine can use clean burning biodiesel. It's a great renewable energy product from soybeans and other oil products. More proof that Minnesota's farm fields are really fields of energy.